Welcome everyone. This is our first Music Tuesday of the semester, right? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, John and, and Barry aren't here to welcome you, but I'm sure they send their, their welcomes. I, um, I believe it was Red Spear. Is he in the house? Hey I believe it was Red Spear during class that said uh, that it kind of sucks that um, students don't get to hear more often what we music professors do, and I basically, right after that class, I think, went to Joan and asked if there was going to be a way uh, I could do a Music Tuesday, and so here it is, and I've grown to kind of be mad at him about that, but... <laughs> um, so uh, most of you know me, if you know me, as uh, your music theory teacher. Maybe a tiny number of you know me as your composition teacher. Um, I'm also a composer myself and a bad cellist, and um, so I'll feature a little bit of that for you today. But what I am most importantly, and none of you probably know this, is a trophy husband. Um, my <laughs> wife, Jenny Martin, who by the way designed the programs, uh, the, the posters that you've been seeing around campus. Um, yeah, round of applause. They, they made me look like I actually have thoughts in my head. It was uh, kind of nice. Um, she, you know, provides food and, and lodging for me. And in return, I give her <laughs> the complete package. And she takes me, you know, buys me nice little things to wear, shows me off at company picnics, that kind of thing. And every once in a while, she takes me on trips. Um, but really, uh, tri taking trips has been a huge part of our relationship forever, practically. Um, we first got together before any of the students here were, um, uh, or when we were younger than any students here, and we went on our first big trip when we were in college, and uh, we've been traveling ever since. And one thing that has always bothered me is that I, I feel like I never form properly vivid memories. I, I remember sort of intellectually that we went to a thing and we saw a such and such, but I, I always felt like there was something deficient in my, in my memory that I couldn't picture, or, I, I don't know. And I don't know why I first tried doing it, but I started composing on trips, sometimes just very little pieces, and you're gonna hear a bunch of those um, tonight in the first and the third piece, which are really just collections of uh, a bunch of little pieces. And for whatever reason, something about engaging in that creative process helps me form a much more vivid memory. I can picture places that we, you know, had coffee. I can picture our hotel room or our apartment. I, something about it has really let me engage. And so when I hear these pieces, I actually almost flash back to these wonderful moments in our life, and it's, um, it's, I guess, something I'm just going to keep doing forever. Speaking of forever, I have known Andy Tanning and James Moore for quite a while. Um, James and I actually performed on this very stage 50 years ago, 100 years ago. 62 years ago. Only 62. And, um, and uh, we, it was a weird thing where we actually only pretended to play our instruments. Um, really strange. Kind of didn't work. But it was fun. It was fun music. Yeah. We had fake instruments. And, uh, and Andy, I don't even know when we first, was it, it was an anti-social music mm -hmm. show, I assume? Yeah, yeah. And, um, and both of them have been enormous supporters of my work. Andy has played seven different pieces by me, and um, they asked if I'd be willing to write some fragment pieces for them, and they're going to perform them today. Uh, you have on the program one movement they're not going to be doing. Sadly, we won't be hearing poopcation today, but, uh, but you can just kind of imagine what that probably sounded like. Uh, are you guys good to go? Or? Yeah, I think so. All right. Thank you. We're going to do these in... <laughs> We're going to do these in uh, sort of three miniature offerings. Um, in the first, uh, the first um, three fragments we'll play. Um, the first one was written in Acapulco, uh, and the next two were written in Mexico City.
d'une part. <rires>
Yeah, I have been playing house music for a long time, and it is always a treat. Um, I have always pushed, I always learn something about what I can do, I learn something about um, what's possible um, every time I play his music. And to this day, I always use his scores as an example of the most pristine and scores that communicate the most bizarre information ever. So definitely take a look um, after the concert, see if he'll show you something. Um, so uh, that, as you heard, was Acapulco, followed by Mexico City 1 and Mexico City 2. And now we're going to do the Netherlands set, um, followed by a brief tuning break after that. We'll talk about it more then. All right, thank you.
Um, and while he's doing so, I thought I'd let you know. So James and I have been playing in a duo now for a number of years, about 10 years, or something like that. It seems like a long time. 13 years, maybe? Okay. 13 12 years. years. <laughs> Is it fun to be, to like be here and hear all the old people talk about how old they are? <laughs> Um, but one thing that we have done in our time together is we recorded an album. Um, it's called Gertrude, so it's, uh, we put it out on New World Records a while ago. Um, if anyone has access to any sort of disc player and they would like to listen to our CD, we have it here. Um, there's, uh, we haven't recorded these pieces yet, um, definitely in the works, but they're um, on this album called Gertrude, so we'll hear music by, by James himself, who's also a wonderful composer, along with Lainey Pfefferman, Paula Matheson, Ken Thompson, uh, Robert Ashley, and am I forgetting someone? We might be forgetting somebody, but oh, they're not here. They don't care. Yeah. Um, but it's fun. It's a, it's a great. It's a great album if we do say so ourselves. Um, so thanks again so much. Thank you, Pat. Uh, I can't wait to hear the rest of the program, and we're going to close out our set with Chichen Itza. Matching the volume of a violin is usually difficult. I, I don't know if you've ever seen a classical guitar with a violin or even like a regular steel string guitar. It doesn't quite, I can, but in this case, I can actually overpower Andy, which is really fun. It, especially Andy Tanaki. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, this monster sound that she has with any other kind of guitar, I don't think that you'd be able to hear that balance. Great job. Thank you so much. Thanks for that.